Watch you guys got another video here for you on five must have Windows utilities. Now I've picked five of these out just because I use these quite a lot and they're very useful to have, especially if you're troubleshooting a program or maybe troubleshooting some sort of malware issue. The first one we're looking at is Process Explorer. It's a very powerful piece of software which allows you to uh, track the processes down for a certain particular type of file. It could be a malicious type of malware file and it's great at doing that particular type of job. So let me open up Process Explorer here and show you how it works. Now Process Explorer is a very powerful tool. You can see it's listed in columns here. We have company name, description, PID, also CPU, process. You can change all of these to your liking. So if you go up to view here, you can see we have select columns. You can then select columns of your choice, whether you want to get verified signature or if you want virus total, company name, uh, image path. There's loads of good stuff inside here which you can monitor. Now, if you do um, have a malicious program or some sort of or even malicious malware. Now, malware is a really big problem. And when you get malware on the system, sometimes it can be hard to track down. But with Process Explorer, it makes it a lot easier to find uh, malicious malware and then obviously find out the place where it resides and then delete it. It's very easy to do. You can see process memory here. You can uh, monitor all this sort of information here. you got process uh, GPU process performance, loads of good stuff inside here. So you can set this up exactly how you'd like yours to be set up. You can look at threads. Um, you've got loads of good stuff on, on here as well. You've got DLLs and of course, uh, process input output, which is your reads and writes and stuff like that. Very useful indeed. Now, the best place for Process Explorer is to swap it out with your task manager on your operating system. You can do that with Process Explorer and you can also revert that back if you wish. I find Process Explorer a lot more powerful and a lot more useful because it gives you a lot more uh, usability than, uh, say, for instance, Task Manager inside Windows itself. Sometimes it doesn't allow you to uh, remove a task and it starts to uh, you know, just freeze up the system, whereas this is pretty bulletproof. It's a pretty decent bit of kit. Now, when you've got it all set up, you can see all the columns have changed here. You can add in a, a load, a lower pane view here, which is nice to do for DLLs or handles. Uh, you can do that as well, and they will uh, come up down the bottom when you click on a certain process. Again, you've got loads of goodies here. You can also check stuff with Virus Total, which is a really useful feature, especially if you've got some sort of uh, process or some sort of program you want to quickly verify to see whether that is a good, well known process or DLL file. You can uh, track it to Virus Total here and it will check it. And sometimes that's a good sign that uh, you have some sort of malicious file or program running on your system. So with this, you can create a dump file, you can suspend a process, you can restart a process, you can search online, you can kill a process or kill a process tree. You can do quite a lot with this uh, particular type of software. So next up, we're going to be taking a look at auto runs. This is another one from Microsoft, a pretty powerful piece of software to control all your startup programs and stuff like that. Now, of course, this is great for malware as well. It's good for weeding out stuff and finding uh, all the, the registry files and stuff like that on that particular uh, process or program that is booting up. So you can see here, it gives you a bunch of tabs. We're on the everything tab at the moment, but up the top there, you've got a bunch of tabs which you can go through. You can see this one here. You can delete this. You can check it with virus total, which will then verify that it's a good process. So you can do the same sort of things inside here, but you can also remove these from uh, the entries in the registry, which makes it quick and easy to remove, uh, you know, problem sort of programs from your system. So you can jump to the entry as well, which will take you straight to that location and you push uh, a jump to that location and it will take you straight there and you'll be able to weed out that particular file from that location. You can see known DLLs, logon, explorer, uh, wind logon and uh, internet explorer. You've got windsock providers, uh, also print monitors, scheduled tasks. You've got loads of stuff here, even services you can even tweak around. Uh, also drivers, LSA providers, 
really good stuff here for finding problem uh, on your system. So I do like this program a lot. It's one of the one of the other ones that I use in conjunction with uh, Process Explorer. Now you can always use the Sys internal suite, which will give you all of the programs in one fell swoop if you want to do that, or you can download just the programs that you use on a regular basis. So it's very useful for that particular type of stuff. Now there's quite a few other programs that they offer, which are very useful as well. I'm just picking out five of ones that I use on a regular basis. So you can get this set up exactly how you want and you will have Process Explorer, Auto Runs, and next up we'll have Process Monitor. So that's three of them that are really, really powerful tools. And this one is great for uh, troubleshooting applications or programs on your system, also malware and things like that. So it's a really powerful uh, piece of kit to have. So definitely get those free on your system and start to use these on a regular basis. It's really good for troubleshooting as well, especially if you've got some sort of a program which is hogging the system. You can sort of troubleshoot it and find it. And again, you can monitor uh, the actual uh, program itself once you set the capture in motion. So you can see here, we've got operation, PID, process name, path, result, and detail. You can add more in as well. And up the top here, uh, you can see we have uh, some little tabs up here with like a little target and also filter, uh, capture and things like that. Now, once it starts capturing, it will start running. And uh, you can see here, this is the capture button here. I've just stopped that right now. But when it runs, it will capture all of the activity on that operating system. You can show registry activity, uh, show file system activity, and also show network activity and also show processes and thread activity on there as well. Really, really awesome uh, piece of software for that sort of thing. So if you have got some sort of issue or you want to track something down, then uh, Process Monitor is a really good way of monitoring what's going on. And you can filter all this out. So basically, you can have a discard a bunch of different stuff here, i.e. exclude by right clicking on it and excluding this from your process. So you don't have to monitor this particular type of process because this is not where the problem lies. So you can exclude a bunch of stuff and then just include what you want. So for instance, you can just have, uh, say for instance, your antivirus, or maybe you can start monitoring, uh, for instance, your Chrome browser. If your Chrome browser is taking all of your resources and you want to find out, you can then monitor it and capture that information. It's very, very powerful indeed, and it's really useful uh, for that type of stuff. Now, I did also mention about filters, and filters are great for filtering what you want to be uh, troubleshooting or, or searching. It could be a process. You can do this by name, by path, uh, by um, PID. You could do it pretty much by anything you like here, and you can select it inside here. And uh, basically, that will start to monitor that particular type of program. So you can select it inside the list here. And on the drop down menu here, you'll see a bunch of stuff here which you can select. So if you add, for instance, a Chrome that you wanted to monitor, you can then select a Chrome. And uh, what that will do is then it will start to, you can then start to capture the system and find out what's going on with Chrome. And it'll help you uh, troubleshoot that with the registry, uh, network activity, and a bunch of other stuff. So it's really, really powerful uh, piece of software. Okay, so let's uh, move on to another piece of software here. So we're going to move on to Windows Repair. Now, Windows Repair tool is a pretty powerful tool if you have issues with your system. Now, maybe you've removed malware or you've got some sort of issue with your network driver or something like that. Maybe malware has messed it up once you've removed it. You can use the Windows Repair tool to fix those. You can also back up and also uh, make registry restore points and things like that with this tool. So it's got steps that you can follow through and it's quite a powerful little tool for that. So let's open up some of the uh, repair tools here that we can take a look at. So once you've got your program open, you can take a look here and uh, you can see we've got a really easy to follow user interface. Now, what I will say to you is don't go running a bunch of repairs on stuff that don't need repairing. There's not much point, and you may also break what you've got that is already working. You can see here, repair network icons, 
uh, you know, Windows updates, bunches of stuff here, which is quite useful. Um, also, you can create restore points, create a preset, and you can create your own sort of presets for what you do on a regular basis, especially if you've got problems with your Windows operating system. Now, it does come in categories here, so you can see we do have repair info and repairs. It's selected to repair all at the moment, so uh, we don't want to be running a repair on all of these. So you can do common repairs, you can also do malware repairs, prim uh, permissions only, and Windows update repairs. So depending on uh, what your repair is, it will take all the ticks out of the stuff that is not needed. You can also create your own preset ones, which is quite useful. So again, don't go running this on all of the fixes if you don't need to, okay? Because it's not much point and you could end up doing more damage. Back up the registry, which is recommended here. You've got permissions back up and also system restore. That's an optional uh, one as well. I would definitely do the system restore and the registry backup before running any of these. You've got system tweaks on here, custom scripts you can add. There's a bunch of stuff on here which you can mess around with. I'm not going to cover too much of that in this video it's just showing you what this program is and you can take a look at it at your own leisure now next up we've got nanite now nanite is a very useful uh, piece of uh, software which you download uh, and it run it and basically what it is is a website you go to and you will put ticks in all of the software that you want to download for instance if it was opera or firefox or chrome or whatever it is you put the tick inside the web browsers then you move on to the messaging so maybe discord or skype and uh, thunderbird we have here and also we have some sort of compression software so 7-zip and uh, there's online storage you can put the tick in what you like media so for instance vlc and also we've got audacity here and a bunch of other good stuff that you may need to download and install now rather than you go to all of the different websites to download this what you do is put the ticks in the boxes that you want to download and this will go and uh, give you the download file which will allow you to run this and basically and it will install them one after the other onto the system which is a really big time saver especially for pc repair techs or even people that are you know home users that are just reinstalled windows and they have to go now and get a bunch of software which they use on a regular basis you can use uh, Nanite to do this for you. Now, of course, there might not be all of the software listed here that you use, but it does use most of the common software out there. So once you hit the download button, it will give you a file and this will have all the downloads in it. You just run this and it will start to install them one after the other onto the system reboot and you're good to go. Now remember this is just five uh, programs which I think are very useful uh, for Windows utilities. Let me know in the comment section which ones you use. I can make more of these if you enjoy them. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. now. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank <laughs> you.